Welcome back to Sledgehammer Horror, guys. I am Ken Sledge, and let's talk horror. Now, today I'm joined by the amazing Brad Dietrich. Brad, how are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? Thank you so much for having me. Uh, this is such an honor for me. We were able to hook up because of a mutual amazing friend of ours, Joy Tanner, and um, this is something I've been very much looking forward to. Now, I want to talk about you a little bit before we talk about the reasons why you're here. Um, you were born in Kitchener, Ontario. Did I say that right? <laughs> you said it correctly. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, after graduating college, you moved to Toronto to pursue your acting and dance career. Um, you've also taken extensive training um, at the Second City Training Center in Toronto, uh, Mind Studios Toronto, Casting Center, Fraser Studios, pretty much anywhere you could train, you've been there and you've done that. So um, you're best known for the Kraft Peanut Butter Bear Crunchy in the Twitter series. Um but also your acting roles in Hotel Paranormal and the LGBTQ plus award winning show Silver Light. Now, one thing I wanted to talk about with you being an actor, you're also a very big activist and a very big proponent of the LGBTQ plus community. Um, you do a lot of work for the LGBTQ plus community, which we all appreciate because any type of goodwill being done towards anybody is just perfect and amazing. And you've done so much for the community. Um, before we start talking about your acting, what really pushed you to want to do more for the community? Great question. Um, I think growing up, I always kind of got picked on because I started dancing at a very young age and I was called like a girl and feminine. So just like I think having that internalized experience growing up, I kind of can relate to a lot of people that might be going through that currently in their life. And I really just wanted to create like a positive, good vibes only platform for people mm -hmm. to be expressive of themselves and to just accept themselves because people are mean in this world, right? So yeah. it's, hard to get through life sometimes when you have a bunch of people attacking you for one silly little reason which is choosing who you love um right. and i just really wanted to emphasize that in a lot of the work that i do well the good thing about that is something we've talked about on this channel before uh this is a safe space and if you're going through something um, i know that coming out and i don't know this from experience obviously as a straight white man i've had it really hard in my life but um, <laughs> um you know coming out can be one of the hardest things you can possibly do but just know that you are never ever alone i know the internet and people in general can be really mean or really cruel and really hateful my dms are always open ashley's dms are always open i know brad is just one of the kindest sweetest people and if you're feeling that way a good thing about this is you see our faces, but you can have that anonymity when we're talking through DMs to where you can express yourself to us and you know that it's a judgment-free zone. You know that you can be yourself with us. And I know that sometimes that's a lot harder to do with people that you know and that you trust. So if you need someone to come out to or to talk to or just advice, me, Brad, Ashley, our DMs are always open. And you don't have to go searching for Brad's DMs because the links are down here in the description so if there's one thing that i always want you guys to take away from this it's that horror movies horror people are always super inclusive and you are never alone and that's not just if you're part of the lgbtq community and you're scared to come out if there's anything you're going through we're all here so please don't feel scared don't feel like you're going through it alone we're always here for you if you need us, any type of creator, any type of influencer, they will be there for you to help walk you through and hold your hand if there's anything you need help with. So yeah, I do want to say right off the top, thank you for the work that you do, because like I said, I personally don't know from experience, but I have a lot of friends and family that are part of the LGBTQ plus community and just watching and hearing some of the stories. I shared a story with you the other day about what one of my good friends, Justin, went through and it's completely disgusting to know there's still people in this on this planet that uh will look at you and judge you because of who you are and who you love it's uh, the one thing i hate is um well they're choosing to be gay stop 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 if right now the world flipped on its <laughs> axis and it was wrong for me to like women in a sexual way i couldn't change that exactly. i could not up and you know decide well i'm gonna start liking guys i, I couldn't do that I don't like it, right so right and that's exactly it you cannot determine 
who you love, why you love them. That's just something that it's in our blood. It's in our chemicals. It's in our nature. So for you to hate somebody because of who they lay down with at night says a whole lot more about you than the person that you're hating on. So it's to um, absolutely. Yeah. So, but let's talk about some fun stuff for a minute, man. You're an actor. It's yeah. fucking incredible. So, um, what, what gate, I know you said you've been dancing such a young age and that's super awesome. You know, dance is one of the most, um, overlooked art forms that there is. Um, what got you into dancing and acting at such a young age? Yeah. So actually, I'm not sure if you ever watched the show, but so you think you can dance. They had an American version. They came to Canada for a bit. Um, I, as a kid, um, I grew up the only child. Uh, I had a couple friends, but not too many, as I said, because I was kind of picked on. So I had a lot of like free time at home to do whatever the heck I wanted. And a lot of that was watching TV and movies. And I came across So We Think You Can Dance. There was this phenomenal male dancer named Nico Archambault. Um, and Joy has actually worked with him before um, in that Life with Derek uh, movie. Yeah. Um, so that's funny. But yeah, he um, inspired me because he was so confident in his movements as a male dancer. And that was something that I was struggling with at, at the time. So I decided to just kick into dance classes. Um, and then from there I got, um, I began, uh, sorry, from there I began doing things in high school like dance team for pep rallies. And then I'm like, you know what, let's try and make money from this. So I just, in 2016, I think it was, that's when I officially, became professional and started diving into auditions um, in Toronto for cruise lines, um, TV shows, things like that. And I loved it. So it started from the TV show and it ends with the TV show. It's kind of funny. That's, how it's so awesome how things wrap themselves around like that, man. That's so incredible. And then obviously you have a great acting mom and I've talked to you about this before. If you surround yourself with amazing people, you are amazing people and joy tanner is somebody that's been a huge influence on your life when it comes to the acting world uh, what's it like for you to, to to go from the dancing aspect of it to the actual acting aspect of it i know they're both really serious art forms but how do you you know bounce back and forth between the two totally so i would say with um dance obviously it's more physically involved because you're using your whole body Mm -hmm. uh, which you do as well with acting, but a lot of the time for TV film, it's hear up kind sure. of thing. And you're supposed to kind of just maintain as still as possible through the bottom half. So I guess with dance, I'm able to incorporate my whole body. And with acting, I'm able to kind of channel the emotions, make them a little bit more subtle, and then bring it through the eyes or the expression of the eyebrow kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, so I would say they're both very similar because they're both telling stories. I guess one is you're telling a story through your body movements and another one is telling a story via your voice. Right. And, and it's amazing how these many different forms of art come together to create such beautiful artwork and, um, you know, with being horror being my cup of tea, you know, it, it's amazing how these things can really incorporate themselves. And we've even seen, you know, horror musicals throughout time. And I think that those are some of my favorite things in the world. And um, I'm going to, I didn't tell you I was going to ask this, but if you could be, take any horror movie and turn it into a musical and you are starring in your own horror musical, what movie do you think that you would choose? I would choose 13 Ghosts and... <laughs> I was born in 97 and that came out in 97 and I'm old as shit. <laughs> this day I was like, I'm still, I'm still terrified by that movie. I think each ghost could be obviously they're a performer and each has so much story that they can work with. I think it would be really interesting to help see more of that. Um, because in the movie 13 ghosts, you kind of just saw them killing people. You didn't really get to see their story um so i think that would be sick to bring you just introduced me to something that i need in my life that i didn't even know i needed until now i need a musical rendition of did i say there's a petting zoo downstairs arthur no there's ghost i need a musical rendition of this 
as soon that. as someone can get on that for me. Um, <laughs> one of my favorite scenes in the whole movie, you know, like, did I say there's a petting zoo downstairs? No, there are ghosts in the basement, <laughs> Arthur. What are you doing? What did I just say? Did I just say there's a petting zoo downstairs? No, there are ghosts downstairs, Arthur. <laughs> like, I need a That's good story for that. Such a good ASAP. <laughs> so, man, again, I do want to remind you guys, all of Brad's social media links are down here in the description. So please make sure you're following him to stay up to date on everything he has coming up here in the near future and the far future because he's not going anywhere. So in order to be a fan of horror, Brad, horror had to start for you somewhere. So now, my friend, I would like to go back to the past and talk about what got you started in horror. First horror movie that you watched. And Brad, your first horror movie was... The Exorcist. <laughs> what an amazing way to start your horror life, man. This is such an incredible movie that I still feel to this day is probably the scariest movie ever made. So do you remember about how old you were the first time you had seen it? I was, it was before I started dancing. So I was probably six or five. And to all the parents out there, my parents are great parents. I heavily had to convince my mother to let me watch it. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know what? And I've said this before. And again, guys, there is nothing professional about what I'm about to say. This is strictly one man's opinion. I feel like if you let your children watch horror at a young age and you give them the education and you give them, you know, everything to go along with it, telling them the difference between right and wrong, as long as you educate them on what they're watching, really? I feel like horror fans are always ahead of the curve and they're more down to earth because they know the difference between fantasy and reality. They know the difference between fact and fiction. It always comes along with education. I'm not saying throw your kid in front of 13 ghosts and just be like, I'll oh, figure it out yourself. You know, there's gotta have, it's just like anything, you know, responsibility and education, drugs, alcohol, sex, as long as you're doing it respectfully, responsibly, and you're educated about what you're doing, you're going to be fine. I feel the same thing with horror movies. So, um, do you remember? And again, I feel like a lot of my best friends and I connect through horror movies and we always mm -hmm. talk about this, but we always like talk about if we were ever in this scenario, like you'd be the best person to be with to try to survive because you've seen it all, you know? So like, I feel like watching horror movies, yeah, it can be gory, yeah, it can be scary, yeah, it can give kids nightmares, but it also can give you some really good tools to throw in your back pocket in case mm -hmm. you're ever in a situation as crazy as what you're watching. Right, right. And I feel like if anybody could survive a horror movie, it wouldn't be me. I'd be dead right off the bat. If I see a spider in my house, I'm like, burn it down. We're moving. I can't imagine what would happen if a horde of zombies was running at me. You know, I'd, I'd be the first one to be like, I'm dead. All right, eat me. Well, that would be that would be next level. I take my <laughs> hats and run. <laughs> right. <laughs> so we know about you know you watched The Exorcist with your parents for the first time at a very young age, but obviously you've turned out great. So that shows that you could watch horror movies at a young age and still turn out okay. Uh, do you remember which scene it was that affected you the most from The Exorcist? Um, for me, so I grew up Roman Catholic. Um, so for me, when <laughs> she started speaking this foreign language that really like that really creeped me out because i was like this this is like how old was she a 12 year old girl yeah. in who only should know english who's speaking some sort of crazy latin tongue and now like completely hovering above the bed like i, I found that so chilling um because it was just something that was so unexpected for me Yep. I, I didn't see that part coming. I expected her to like freak out and stuff, but speak a whole new language. That's that's scary, man. You know, well, that's when you know it's not her it. anymore. Sorry, that's when you know it's not her anymore. Yeah, you know that. Like, and, that yeah, I agree. One thing I love about this movie, and there are certain horror movies that do this with me personally, but watching this movie as a young boy versus watching this movie as a parent are two completely different viewings. You know, as a kid, it, it fight or flight, you know, burn the fucking house down, who cares, she's gone. Girl's dead, get out of here, she, you know, burn her down, she's done. As a parent, that's my little girl. True. And I think one of the saddest scenes in cinema history is when you see Help Me carved on Reagan's stomach. 
Cause you know, she's still in there. This little girl, the most innocent, beautiful thing we have on this planet, children. And she's still in there and she's begging for help. And that to me is one of the saddest scenes in all of cinema. Like, you're just like, Oh my God, she's still in there. You can't burn the house down and run away. Six year old. Ken, you fucking idiot. You got to <laughs> save this little girl. So, um, this is another film that I believe has stood the test of time. I think that The Exorcist, I watch it now and I'm just as scared as I was the first time I watched it. A hard scene to pick, or a hard movie to pick a favorite scene, but what would you say your favorite scene from The Exorcist would be? Like, I don't want to be original and say the whole part where she vomits because that's just like extremely disgusting and you really sense that there's something physically wrong with her, that individual or that entity. I would probably say that. Like, it, yeah. it just hit home for me. Um, and sometimes special effects and makeup can go a long way when it's not overdone. And I think they did a great job with not making it look stupid, but making it look concerning, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Oh, absolutely. Because I think that if you if you did that scene now with the CGI, it could look like dog shit. Thank you. Thank you. Absolutely. I'm, I'm a huge proponent of practical effects. Now, do I hate CGI? No. Am I anti-CGI? No. Am I anti-overusage of CGI? 100%. Take agree. your practical effects and then sprinkle in your CGI just to make it look a little bit better. I'm 100% on your team with that. Yeah. So that was like, that was a make it or break it moment for me. I was like, oh, man, this is crazy. I'm like, I'm yeah. not going to be sick in bed ever again because I'm just going <laughs> to be thinking about like, that scene. Right. Well, and, and this movie is part of a franchise now. You know, there's five films in the Exorcist franchise at the time of filming. They are doing the new requel with Blumhouse. So eventually there will be more. But Love is the original Exorcist your favorite in this franchise? So after I watched the original Exorcist, I don't even think I had the nerve to continue with the ones that came after because it was so disturbing for me. So it's actually probably one of my least watched franchises, even though it's the first movie, like first horror movie I ever saw, which is weird. It's like it scarred me that much to the point where I don't even want to watch anything that came after it. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny because with The Exorcist, the first three movies, you have the first movie, which I feel is the scariest movie of all time. You have the second movie, which I genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, feel is the worst movie that's ever been made. I think The Exorcist 2, not only my least favorite horror movie, my least favorite movie. It's a miserable experience. Really? However, I think The Exorcist 3 is my favorite in the whole franchise. It is... It's it's amazing. I Brad, I cannot recommend it enough. And please Exorcist text me. Rose or something. Oh no, it's just the Exorcist three, and then you got the Exorcist four and the Exorcist five, which are the exact same movie, just cut different. It's weird when you watch them, but it's just the Exorcist three. You've got to watch the Exorcist three. It's it's more of a supernatural slasher, but it connects pieces from the first movie. It's got Brad Dourif in it playing the Gemini killer. Um, oh, oh, it's. So it's so that. good dude it's and i'm telling you like it's got funny moments it's got the best of all time my favorite jump scare of all time is in the exorcist 3 uh the only time i think i've ever literally screamed watching movie i'm like oh oh you got me you son of a bitch you did it you got me um but yeah i that, cannot man. i cannot recommend the exorcist 3 enough and after you watch it you need to call or text me and be like yo you're right or Ken, that was dog shit. I hate you. Don't oh, ever make oh, me a recommendation again. So we, we, we talked about your first horror movie, Brad, and what The Exorcist means to you. But now I want to throw a little bit of a curveball here at you. My little buddy Ghostface is here, and he has a question for you. What's your favorite scary movie, Brad? <laughs> <laughs> what is your favorite oh, horror movie of all time? Mommy, it's Scream. The, oh, my gosh. Like, hands down Scream. I couldn't agree with myself more on that one <laughs> my best friend's favorite horror movie franchise it's it's something that i could watch over and over and over and over and over again and never get bored of it and never have anything really bad to say of it other mm -hmm. than the fact that i'm sad Wes craven is no longer with us <laughs> that's right. my only thing that is like 
I'll, I'll always say that Child's Play is my favorite horror franchise. I think Child's Play, in my opinion, is my favorite. But when it comes to consistency, continuity, and quality of film, you can't beat Scream. Scream is the best horror franchise I think that's ever been made as a time of filming. The last one we've had is Scream 2022. So maybe by the time Scream 2023 comes out or Scream double exclamation point or whatever the hell they're going to call this next film, <laughs> maybe my opinion will change. But as of right now, I think uh, Child's Play is my favorite. Scream is the best. And I'm telling you, man, Friday the 13th is just a little below it. Um, yeah. So I I've had an amazing time, Brad, talking to you about your first horror movie, your favorite horror movie. And now before I let you go, I have one last question for you. And I think I know the answer, but I got to ask the question. My script commands it. So um, <laughs> we're going to bounce back to The Exorcist. And what we're going to do here, Brad, is we're going to rank this movie on skull count. Now, we're not judging this movie on acting, production, uh, score, nothing like that. What we're doing here is strictly judging this movie on how much it affected you on first viewing, Brad. So zero skulls being not effective, five being extremely effective. You can use half and quarter skulls anywhere in the middle. Uh, Brad, what would your ranking of The Exorcist be? Five and a half. <laughs> I knew it. I mean, like, I'm telling you, and I've told this story before, and I'm sorry for repeat viewers, but... Um, Definitely. The Exorcist is the only movie. I grew up in a video store. I had, you know, my parents owned a video store. So I had videos at my disposal. Awesome. Yeah. Like I had movies at my disposal all the time. And The Exorcist is the only film my mother ever shut off. She was like, nope, too much. We're not doing this. We got to the crucifix part. And she was like, no. And I was like, she stabbed herself. I watched Jason stab people all the time. What the hell is the problem? She's like, I said, no, go to bed. And I was like, you know what? This is bullshit. I got to finish this movie. I got to watch this movie. And then I watched it. And I was like, oh, I didn't have to do that. Yeah. <laughs> I was right. Mother is always right, right? Yeah. But I'm telling you, man, I'm 36 years old now. And I thought I was desensitized to horror. But there's a movie that's come out recently. It's a Shudder original called The Dark and the Wicked. And that's the only movie since The Exorcist that's genuinely rocked me to my core and scared me. It was seriously like three in the afternoon watching The Dark and the Wicked. And I was talking to my wife. I was like, hey, baby. If you're scared, you can open the blinds. It won't bother me if you're scared, you know, but like, I, I love the fact that even as we grow older, there are still movies that can impact us that way. So um, you guys know, that's my last question. So the curtain's about to drop, the credits are about to roll, but before they do, third time's a charm. All of Brad's social media links are down here in the description. So please make sure you're following him so you can stay up to date on everything he has coming up in the future. Uh, Brad, please don't go anywhere. I got a couple more questions for you. Uh, sure. everybody else as always keep talking horror stay what you are and we'll see you guys soon